The Lord is keeping you. Amen. What worry do we have? Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter what's going on in the atmosphere. Amen. It doesn't matter what uh, the enemy is trying to do. It doesn't matter the circumstances that you're going through. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says all we got to do. All the writer said all we got to do is sing and shout. Hallelujah. And praise your God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And praise your God. Hallelujah. Your circumstances does not depict the joy of God in you. The joy of God should be your strength. Hallelujah. Your circumstances should not matter. Amen. You should be able to praise God through everything. And if you know, if you know, if you have the assurance in yourself through the word of God, that the Lord is keeping you. Come on, we should be singing. We should be shouting. We should be dancing. Hallelujah. We should just give him the praise. That is due to his name. I'm just going to ask Sister Morgan. We're just going to sing this just one more time. And just come on, just put some. Hallelujah. Just, just give it all to God in this, Hallelujah. In this, in this time. Amen. Amen. He deserves the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. He's keeping us. Amen. Hallelujah. Even in this pandemic. Glory. He's keeping us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you know the Lord.
in the house. Amen. You know, when you can feel the presence of the Lord, it's a glorious thing. Many today would want to have this. Hallelujah. But we got to thank God for being here. You want to understand that wherever the Spirit of God is, when God is building something, He's always there. When God is building his house, he said whatever he's doing and whatever is according to his will and according to his plan, he's going to bless it. Yeah. Whatever we're doing that is within the plans of God, within his architecture, he is going to bless it. So we thank God for his blessings over us today. Thank God for the worship team. Thank God for the Spirit of God that is with us. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. God has been good to us. Over the past three weeks we have been talking about the Holy Spirit cannot work without the Word of God. The Holy Spirit cannot work without the Word of God. And we had a couple, three persons that came and I promised we would do this for four weeks. Amen. And today we're going to have, amen, our young brother Jay. He's going to come and tell us, amen, what the word of God means. And how it's operating in his life. And he has 10 minutes. Amen. amen. Praise God. Brother Jay, come on, put your hand for him. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. I hope y'all are having a blessed, blessed Sunday. Anyways, uh, before I start, I'd like to just do a quick little prayer. Father God, thank you for the miracles and wonders that you're doing in this house tonight. Thank you for all the blessings and the people that are here tonight, Father. I thank you for everything that you continue to do, all the responsibilities that you give to us all the things that we are able to do to give you the glory. Amen and amen. So, I was tasked to question to find what is the Word of God and what does the Word of God mean? I'm going to be honest with y'all. I thought, it's a quick, quick and done question. Word of God is the Bible, right? That's what I immediately, that's what I went to. But Pastor, he got me thinking. He was a real trial and test, I gotta say, because when I was trying to figure out what the word meant, especially to me, it, it took me a long time to figure it out. But I finally came to the conclusion that the word is something soft-spoken. The word is something beautiful. The word is something brilliant in all of its majesty, in all of its ways. The word is Jesus. That's the conclusion I came to. Because if you look at the literal word of God, the Bible, notice that the Bible is one story and it's all about Jesus. Jesus Christ is a central figure in the whole Bible, in both the Old and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, he is hidden and anticipated. However, in the New Testament, he is revealed and enjoyed. Amen. The whole point of the Bible is to come to know Jesus, is to come to know God. See, when I think of the Bible, I think of it as a blueprint, the blueprint of Jesus. So when I was pondering on the question of what is the word, I came up with something. The literal word of God is the blueprint to the physical word of God, Jesus, to get to the spiritual word of God, which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. See, when you're silent, it means you're listening. Amen. When you're screaming and shouting, it means you're understanding. The literal word of God is the blueprint. Mm -hmm. It's how we must live to be like Jesus, which is the physical word of God. And the whole point is to reach the end goal of the spiritual Amen. word of God, Amen. which is heaven. Amen. That's the conclusion that I came to. 
You know, and I was, when I was thinking about it, all my three brothers here, that's what y'all talked about. Brother Adam here, he talked about the physical word of God. He talked about the blessings and miracles that happen in this world. Yeah. Amen. Brother Ray here talked about the spiritual word of God. No, no, he talked about the literal word of God, the Bible. Brother Michael here talked about the spiritual word of God. See, when we're all in one accord, I came to this ending in which that we bring it all together. The, the literal word connects us to the physical world, which then connects us to the spiritual world. And I was so baffled by that. It really took me a second to really think about it. And it's got me onto why the word matters. Because cause God, the word matters simply because it is there to help us, it is there to guide us, to be fruitful, to live a godly life. Because that's what we're all called to live. Some of us say we're Christians, but are you really living like how Jesus lived? Because in the Bible, I know some of y'all think this, you'd be like, but the Bible don't teach me how to handle my six children. The Bible don't this and that. The Bible don't teach me how to manage taxes and this and that. No, the Bible teaches you how to be like Jesus. And once you're like Jesus, you can handle all of that. Because Jesus, wasn't Jesus the one who conquered death? Wasn't Jesus the one who conquered life? Wasn't Jesus the one who conquered poverty, taxes? He conquered everything. So if we are called to be like Jesus, then we, can, we ourselves can conquer it all. Amen. Amen. So my word of encouragement is to be like Jesus. Don't just say, I follow Jesus. Don't just think that you do. No. Read the word of God. Follow it. And once you understand it, you can be like Jesus and you can face all odds. Right? Because that's what God was here to send. That's what God was sent to heaven to do. He was to show us that we can manage sin. Show us that we can manage anything that comes before us. Because what is it? What he did in 40 days, we couldn't do in 40 years. When we were trapped in the desert in Exodus. It took us 40 years to travel the desert, but he did it in 40 days. He showed us what it means to be, to be Christ-like. What it means to be, to follow the word of God. My encouragement for you today, follow the word of God, lead godly lives, walk hand in hand with him, and you yourself will experience heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. The old purpose of the word of God is for us to apply it to our lives so that we can become You know, many of us, we are trying to figure out why we are on this earth. And everybody have many different theory to give why we are on this earth. But I'm gonna share this another time, not today. But I will share this with you, why you're on this earth, and the five purpose why we are here. Because I recognize that we don't know why we are here. And because we don't know why we are here, we struggle. But the word of God has given us and give us the reasons why we were born and we are in this earth. Hallelujah. Everything we need is in the word of God. That's why we have it. That's why in the, David said, it is a lamp unto our feet and a light and to our pathways. Without the word of God, we can't make it. Without knowing the word of God, we're not gonna make it, church. But before I get into my teaching today, let's just declare the word of God once more. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. 
We live by the word. We die by the word. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. The four men that share the word of God, God has given us, amen, all something different. But at the end, we all come to the same conclusion. Amen. Hallelujah. And the point is, is that in Christendom, it doesn't matter where you're worshiping. It doesn't matter the locality where you're at. And if we are reading the word of God, we should be arriving at the same results. Because the point is, this is what is going to get us where we need to go. Hallelujah. And I was reflecting on the word of God this week and I recognize in the, the church are the, is a place the Bible called the schoolroom. And if it's a schoolroom, we all have a curriculum. In every school district around the world, in Canada, let's use Canada for an instant, we all have the same curriculum right we all have that so why is it in the kingdom of God we supposed to have the same curriculum but we are arriving at a different place it means something is off because the Bible says this is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway, it is good for edification and it's what gonna help us to get to the destination that we need to get to. So it amazes me why we are all not together in one accord, pressing for the same place and we all should arrive at the same destination. But I believe it's because we start to put our own thinking. We start applying your imagination of what it should look like. We are not just teaching the word of God as it's hard to because we want to think that we are so educated and we are so lear well learned because I'm a doctor in theology and I want to put my say in it. The Bible says something that is very important. He says, what is hidden from the wise and prudent is going to re reveal, hallelujah. So the point is what I'm trying to say, denominationalism is not of God. I want to say this again. Denominationalism is not of God. But I believe that's where man gets their glory. <laughs> I believe that's where man shines because it is my church. It is a family heirloom. I might not believe this and I'm going to believe it till the day I'm dying, even if you're wrong. But it's time that we get into the word of God and apply the word of God to our lives. So uh, we have been talking for the last three weeks that the Holy Spirit cannot work without the word of God. Last week, I stopped here and I said no sinners or unbelievers can believe the word of God without the Holy Spirit. I want to say this again. No sinners... Our unbelievers can believe the word of God without the Holy Spirit. And I said last week about sinners and how the church always seems to be beating up on the world. And we're calling the world sinners. But the world cannot be sinners if they don't know God. 
But the world is unbelievers because they don't believe God. An unbeliever had a destination, going have a destination in mind. And the Bible says that destination is hell. But the sinners have a different destination. Hallelujah. They are outside the gate. While the believers have a destination. And it's heaven. <laughs> we'll talk more about that sometime if you missed it. Hallelujah. Until the Holy Spirit intervene in the hearts of sinners and unbelievers, they will continue to reject the truth of the gospel. Until the Holy Spirit start operating in your life, in the sinner's life. And I say sinners because many of us who professing to be Christians, we are still sinning against God. And we need the Holy Spirit in our lives to break down the word of God in your heart so that you start believing it. And do you know that not because you believe, it doesn't mean you receive it. Because the Bible says the devil believe and what? Trembles. Oh, hallelujah. So when we become believers, we got to start receiving the word of God in our hearts, in our spirit, and start use it and apply it to our lives, and then we are going to become like? What, what's our goal anyway? What is our goal? What is our purpose for coming into the house of God? What is your purpose for transforming? What are you trying to transform into? Hallelujah. What are you trying to renew your mind into? We are trying to renew our whole thinking in the way Christ wants us to think. We are trying to apply the word of God so it's going to shape our lives. Oh, hallelujah. But until you have the Holy Ghost operating in your heart, guess what? You're going to read the word of God, but you're going to do something different. Because you're going to think it does not apply to you. But we have to make sure the Holy Spirit is in us so that we can believe the gospel. The unbeliever, they need the Holy Spirit to convict them of their sins and of their trespasses. So that they can come to a place of believing and receiving Jesus Christ in their life. Anyone can memorize facts, listen to sermons, and, uh, and gain some level of knowledge pertaining to biblical doctrine, but outside the old ghost power, God's word will never penetrate those sinful hearts. We need the Holy Ghost to break up those stony hearts and prepare it. So that the word of God can be germinated in your hearts. So that we'll be able to apply it and we we'll start doing what the word of God says we should do. Believers on the other hand have been made alive by the spirit of God who now indwells them. So the spirit of God is in you to do what? To make the word of God become alive. So you need the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can apply the word of God because the word of God will become life to you. It's going to start mean something to you. So you're going to know that you can't sin against God. Why? Because David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against thee. So when you have the word of God in your heart, guess what? You will not sin against God. So you see how important the word of God is? We need to have it in our hearts and it will guide us, it will convict us so that we will not sin against God. First John chapter two and verse 27, and we're hoping we can read together as we go through this scripture very quickly today. But the anointing which we have what? Receive of him, abide it in you and he need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointed, anointing teacheth you of all what? All things in what? Truth. And in no lie. And even as it are taught you, you shall what? Abide in it. 
We as people of God, when we read the word of God, it, we're supposed to apply to our lives and we're supposed to be abiding in the word of God. If you walk out of the word of God, you're walking out the will of God and you're sinning against God. So we have to apply the word of God in us and have it in us so that we will not sin against God. Through the Holy Spirit's work, our inspiration uh, apl applied only to the human archers of scripture. The Holy Spirit ministry of the illumination is given to believers. So the inspiration of scripture was given to who? The apostles. Amen. Who wrote the scripture. It was, they were inspired to write the scripture. But the Holy Spirit is not inspiring us today. It is illuminating the scripture to us. The Holy Spirit is giving us the understanding of the written, inspired word of God. So you see why you need the Holy Spirit? The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of God. I want to say this again. The natural man cannot understand the things of God. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. So we need the Holy Spirit in our hearts so that he can illuminate the word of God and allow you to comprehend it. The natural man will not be able to do that. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life today is to illuminate the word of God, the inspired word of God, so that it makes sense to you. Do we need the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Do we need the Holy Spirit? We need the Holy Spirit in order for us to make sense of what we're reading. Without the Holy Spirit in you, you will not understand. And I believe that's why we have so many denominations around the world. Because many deny the power of the Holy Ghost. Many don't want the Spirit of God in them. And the Bible says when you don't have the Spirit of God, it becomes bodily exercise. It's nothing that we're doing. We're in the house of God. We're dancing. We're jumping. And we don't have the Spirit of God in us. The Bible says it is bodily exercise. It's profit us zero. So we need the Holy Ghost. And because if we all have the Holy Spirit, because the Bible says the church is one foundation. It is Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. So if we all read in the same Bible, amen, we should all arrive at the same thing. Hallelujah. We do mathematics, don't we? When we, it doesn't matter what school you go to. And you, one on one is what? It's still two, right? If you're doing multiplication, two times two is what? We know, it doesn't matter where in the world you go, you, up, you get to the same answer. Why? Because it's an application. It's a principle. Amen. So, so this is the word of God. It's a principle that we should apply to our heart, to our lives, and all of us should be having the same results. But the problem is we lack the greatest teacher, and his name is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said when he was leaving this earth, he said, I am leaving, but I'm going to give you something, or someone, hallelujah, that's going to be able to teach you all things. And he said he's not going to also bring back things to your memories. So when you're going through your struggle, that's why it's important to read the word of God. Because when you're going through your struggles, when hardship come, and you can't physically pick up the word of God, because it has been written in your heart, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit is in there to reach out and pull something up in your memory that will meet the needs of what you desire in that season, in that time. So we need the Holy Ghost to empower us and to empower the word of God in us. Oh, hallelujah. We can't do without the Holy Spirit. It is the one that will empower the word of God in us. Second Corinthians 4 verse 6 says, 
For God whom commanded the light to shine out of darkness or shine into our heart to give the light of what? The knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But he have this treasure in earthling vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of. So it's not about us. It is about the power of God through the Holy Spirit. That's what's going to enlighten our eyes and our understanding and our knowledge in the word of God. So we need the Holy Spirit in our lives, church. It needs to be operating at its full potential. And we need to feed it so it does not die. Because the what gives the Holy the Spirit life is the word. The word is what feed the spirit man without the word of God in our hearts in our lives we are allowing the spirit man to die and today we go to the house of God we spend more time worshiping and less time studying the word of God we have worship for 45 minutes to an hour and we have 10 minutes of the word what is more important the word of God because the word is what going to feed the spirit hallelujah the, 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 the worship is good. We need it because it inhabits our praise. But the praise is to God. But the word is for you. <laughs> Can I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. The worship is to God. But remember, God is not walking on the earth today. So the word, the Bible says, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So it's good to come and worship and exalt God to its fullest potential. But without the word of God, you have nothing to walk by, nothing to live by. The word is for us. <laughs> it's a lamp unto our feet. And a light unto a pathway. So it's okay to praise and jump and whatever. Oh, how you want to jump and praise? God inhabit. He appreciate it. But the word of God is what going to keep you. When you can't praise. You know in Canada we know that we can't go do some crazy things in the workplace. We can't go there and try to sing some spiritual hymns. They fire you. But if you have the word of God in you, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God will live up at standard because the word of God will be there to guard you. Yes, <laughs> Inspiration has been given us the message inscribed on the pages of scripture. So the Holy Spirit inscribed the word of God on the pages of scripture. Illumination inscribe that the message on our heart. So the Holy Spirit is now supposed to inscribe or illuminate the message on the tables of our hearts. So we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we got to feed him with the word of God so that he can write it on our hearts. Hallelujah. Enabling us to understand what it means. As we rely on the Holy Spirit of God to shine the light of truth brightly in our minds. We need the Holy Spirit to illuminate the word of God in your hearts, in your lives. It's important. Luke chapter 24 verse 45 says, Then open ye their understanding. That they might understand scriptures. Who is opening up your understanding? The Holy Spirit is the one that opening up your understanding. So that you can do what? Understand the scriptures. Oh hallelujah. Before I take the, up the word of God. And to study and to bring a word to you. I better invite the Holy Ghost. Oh hallelujah. If not it is empty. Before I come and stand on the pulpit, and I'm in my office here, right here, I got to lift the word up to God and say, God, I need to bless this word. I need, when I go out there, it's not me that's speaking, but it's you that's speaking through me. Hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. Because I need the Holy Spirit to illuminate the word so that when it goes out, it's going to bring changes. Hallelujah, church of God. Hallelujah. It is the glorious ministry of the Holy Spirit to open the minds of the citizens of the kingdom of God. It's saints to understand scripture so they know and obey the word of God. It doesn't matter how much I preach. It doesn't matter how hard I preach. If you're not applying the word of God, if you're not obeying the word of God, then guess what? It's not doing you nothing. It's not profiting you a thing. You got to start applying the word of God and allow the word of God to be printed in your hearts through the power of the Holy Ghost. So they know and obey the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who inspired the scripture and he lives forever. So he is the best one to open your, the scripture to you. The Holy Spirit is here right into eternity. When he opened the scripture to you. I, I'm, I believe in <laughs> at some point. Hallelujah. I know I'm not here for eternity. I'm only here for a moment. So whatever I'm giving you and my young brethren and young people in the house of God, whatever I'm giving you, you, you you're going to need that when I'm gone. And you need the Holy Spirit to keep reminding you of the word of God. Because one day I'm leaving. But the word of God is going to remain. Oh, hallelujah. The word of God is going to remain. There are some secret that belong to God. And no believer is going to unlock it. We find many taking the word of God and trying to understand secrets. And you try to read the word of God, you don't understand something. If you don't understand it, leave it alone. But instead, you're trying to break down something, and even God himself did not reveal it to you. And that's why we have so many lying prophets and lying pastors and all these things, because they're trying to break down something that God has never opened up to them. You don't believe me? Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to what our children for what forever that we may do all the words of his law so there's some things that we're never gonna know there's some things that we'll never find out that's why the writer said further along We'll understand because we'll never know some things on this earth. That's why the writer said, if it's only in this life, only we have hope. We'd have been men most miserable. So the things that you're going through that don't make sense, just don't worry about it. Just keep pressing, keep believing that, Lord, I, it don't make sense right now, but I am trusting you. But many of us want to understand everything that we're going through. There is some things that we are not going to understand. You will understand first been through these things if he choose for you to understand it Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 11 and 12 says hallelujah before I go there not because Deuteronomy says some things amen will not reveal to us it does not mean we don't need godly teachers it doesn't mean because there's some things that the Holy Spirit will give to you and help you to understand the word of God. It doesn't mean you don't need godly teachers. God has placed me here to teach the word of God. And God has placed many other preachers around the world to teach the word of God because there's a reason why. Hallelujah. But as it helps us to understand in Ephesians 4, 11, 12, he said, and he gave some what? Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and what? Teachers. One of the things 
that in this scripture here that is very important is that a pastor must be able to teach. Hallelujah. A pastor must be able to teach. I believe God combined those two gifts together in all capacity because we got to be able to teach. For the perfecting of what? The saints for what? The work of what? Ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. So we got to understand we are placed here to teach you. Even though I'm telling you, you need to go and read the word of God for yourself through the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when I'm reading and I'm teaching the word of God, it should be bringing confirmation to you. Hallelujah. It will start to make some sense because sometimes we said, I don't understand what I read. I don't understand. And maybe you don't understand. But as the preacher is preaching the word of God, guess what? You start to get clarity in the things that you read because the Holy Spirit starts revealing some things to you. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Timothy 4 verse 8 said, For bodily exercise profit little, but godliness is profitable unto what? All things. I like this. 1 Timothy 4 8, For bodily exercise what? Profit little, but God, godliness is profitable unto what? All things, not some things. In everything that you're doing, godliness must apply in every situation you're going through. Godliness must apply to all things, not some things. Having promise of the life that now is, and that which is to come. So we need to apply godliness right through, right into eternity. It is not a part-time thing. You don't, don't get godly on a Sunday morning. Oh, hallelujah. You just don't get godly, amen, when you get standing before the mirror and come into the house of God. Your lifestyle must be godly right throughout in every area, in every facet. Whatever you're doing in your workplace and walking on the street, in the malls, wherever you go, that godliness must be showing. It's not a part-time thing. It's a hard-time thing. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. When we're going out in the world, we dress one way. Amen. And when we are coming to the house of God, we dress another way. We have different things for different. Yeah, you can have different clothes, but guess what? You should look and look holy and dress holy wherever you go. You should look like a man of God. You should look like a woman of God anywhere you go. In the olden days, you were able to just see a man of God or a woman of God and look and say, you know, that's a man of God. Just by his appearance. Today, you don't know the difference. Because we want to be a partakers, amen, of everything that's happening around us. But the Bible says that we are royalty. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. The, the Bible says we are royalty. Come on. You don't have the queen of England come and walk in, 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 around us. And, and you can see it, they, they're looking different. They're, they're dressing according to who they are. So we got to make sure when we're, whatever we're doing, we shine in the capacity that we are supposed to shine as holy men, as holy nation. We are called out, we are set apart, we are the ecclesia. We got to make sure whatever we are doing is in the light of holiness that brings glory to God, isn't it? You know, I was in Jamaica a year ago and I was getting ready to go to to um and the north coast for a couple of days and for the first time the people in the community see me dressed down in a way that i'm going to they, you know because then i have shorts and all and not and every shot you know they are not used to they don't used to, used to see me in shorts because they always see me in you know dressed in a shirt and pants and something walking down the street whatever but i was going to a place of relaxation so i did i just stripped down muscle showing you know and all that you know they were shocked you know i said listen I, I, you know <laughs> It, it, that happens sometimes because I'm going to a place of relaxation so I'm getting myself comfortable for the ride. Amen. But what I'm saying is, is that wherever you go, you got to make sure you're follow, you, you, you look, you talk, 
Everything about you should depict who you are. It should. It, 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 we, we, not, we, we, we don't just get holy when we come to the house of God. We don't just get old. There's a place for everything. Oh, hallelujah. So we are going to make sure when we walk out here, we are men, women of God, not just men, women of God, but only men and women of God. It should be depicted in every area of our lives. Oh, hallelujah. We need to do the work of carefully studying God's word with joy and eagerness. The word of God, many of us, we, look, we read the word of God and we think it's a burden. But it's not a burden. If he puts it there, it's there for a reason. And if we apply it, we'll see the result. Praise the name of Jesus. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. The beauty about studying is, it's not about me. Come on church. The beauty about studying the word of God is not about your pastor. It's not about even yourself. You do understand what the word of God is saying? Study to show yourself approved unto who? Unto God. When I ask you to read the Bible, I'm not asking to read the Bible for me. There's a verse in Revelation that says, Blessed are those that read. And when you study the word of God, Paul says, don't study the word of God unto me. Study it unto God because you're trying to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God wants to know that you're studying the word of God when you go out there and somebody attack you. You should be able to defend who you're standing for. Isn't it, church? You're going to be able to stand up. When you walk out there in the world today and you see all the different type of stuff that's happening out there, you better know the word of God. Because they're going to attack you and they're going to tell you what they think. And you better be able to defend or stand up for what you believe in. Many today are getting sidetracked, are moving away from the kingdom of God because they have nothing to stand on. They did not study the word of God for themselves and they get moved all over the place. They have nothing, no footing. They have no stronghold. We need to have the word of God so that we can have powerful stronghold in our lives. The word of God is there to what? Study to show yourself, approve what? Rightly dividing the word of truth. The Holy Spirit will illuminate our heart to comprehend and embrace and apply the truth of God's word to our lives. The Holy Spirit is there for that. To embrace us and to strengthen us so that we can apply the words of God to our lives. The Holy Spirit is a powerful thing. And if we allow it to work in our lives, we will see miracles. We'll see wonders. We want, we live a stress-free life. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I said, if you apply the word of God in your life, you'll develop confidence. So that you can sleep at night. Huh? Huh? When you have the confidence and believe the word of God, not just believe it, but receive it in your hearts, you're going to be able to lay down and sleep because it is the joy of God in your heart that's going to allow you to sleep. It is not the circumstances that you're going through. It is not the bills. It's not the unstableness in the workplace. It's not the pandemic. It's none of that. It is the word of God that you take confidence in and receive it in your heart. And the joy of the Lord is going to give you the strength and the courage to go to sleep and don't even worry. But if we don't have the word of God in our hearts, then we are in trouble. Hallelujah. I was hoping to get through this today, but you know what? I'm not going to rush the Lord. We have Dr. Run next week, but if I have to finish what the Lord is saying the week after, I'll continue. Because it's such a powerful thing that 
if we understand the word of God clearly and have it in our hearts, what we're going through, the stress we're going through, the anxiety we're going through, the fear that we're going through would have dissipated, would, would not be in our lives. We don't want to be happy Christians. We want to be joyful Christians. You know what's the difference between happiness and joy? Happiness had to do with happenings. <laughs> if your happiness is geared on what is happening <laughs> in that moment, guess what? When that thing is not happening, you're not going to be happy no more. <laughs> I want to say this because if you don't leave here with anything else today, I want you to get this. Happiness depends on something happening to keep you happy. And when that thing is not happening, you become unhappy. <laughs> but joy does not depend and what's happening? <laughs> well, that's why the word of God should give you joy. <laughs> it does not depend on your circumstances. It doesn't depend on your job situation. It does not depend on your financial situation. It does not depend on your marital status. It does not depend on anything. It all depends on the word of God and the confidence you have in the word of God. It is going to be there right through into eternity. That's why the Bible says the joy of the Lord is, is my strength. Even when somebody dies, you still have joy. In the midst of the storm, you still have joy. When it don't make sense, you still have joy. When the tempests are raging, you still have joy. Why? Because it does not base on something happening. That's the difference. When, not, when everything is not happening, you still need to have joy. That's where God comes in. That's where the Lord comes in. That's where the word of God comes in because that's when you start draw your strength. I know where my strength comes from. My strength comes from the Lord which makes the heavens and the hurt. But when you happy, when life is good, when the paycheck is running good, overtime is running good, bills are paid, hallelujah. You don't think, think you need to be in the house of God. Huh? But as some things go crazy, you think you need to be in the house of God because you're looking for joy. But it doesn't matter where you're at. Joy should be in you. It doesn't matter what going through. If you, it doesn't matter what it is that you're going through. Joy must be there. As people of God. But you can only have joy if you have the word of God in you. When something is not happening, you get sad. But when joy is in you, you're going to be always glad. Huh? Well, I want you to understand that today. If you don't leave here with nothing else, keep that in your spirit. You don't want happiness. It's, it, it, it's, it's an emotional thing. Joy is consistent right into eternity. We sing the song, we'd rather have joy. We'd rather have joy. The writer said, I'd rather have Jesus than silver than gold. I'd rather be led by his word. I'd rather have Jesus than houses and land. Oh, hallelujah. Because that's what's going to give you joy. 
is Jesus in your life. The house and the land is temporary. Church of God. The house and the land is temporary. The marriage is temporary. The kids are temporary. The grandkids are temporary because one day we are leaving or they are leaving. But the joy of the Lord will be a restaurant right into eternity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you for your love. I thank you because of the power of the Holy Spirit, mighty God, applying the word of God to our lives through the Holy Spirit. Mighty God, we are stronger and we are better than ever. I pray, God, the Holy Spirit, Lord, will help us. Mighty God, and open up scriptures to us. Because, Lord, you said the natural man cannot understand the things of God. But, Lord, through the power of the Holy Ghost and the enlightening of the Holy Spirit, the illumination of the Holy Spirit of the Word of God in our lives, mighty God, it will make sense to us. I pray, Father God, we apply the word of God as we study to show ourselves approved unto God. I pray, mighty God, that the spirit of God will infill us, mighty God, indwell us, and mighty God will move in us and give us the joy that we need, even in this time of pandemic. I pray, Father God, that the spirit of God will come to move through this earth, mighty God, and will touch lives, and mighty God, even in this time, mighty God, that people will come to know you, mighty God, to know that you are real and that you're alive and that you're well. I pray, Father God, for the church of the living God around the globe, mighty God, that they will come to the conclusion to know the word of God, that we are all heading to the same destination. And if we could apply the word of God according to scripture, the undiluted word of God, then we will be better. We'll be more effective. We'll be more impactful, Lord. I pray, mighty God, there's a spirit that is going on around in Christendom today, God. Mighty God, that spirit of Baal is still out there, Father God. Mighty God, still operating, Father God. I pray, mighty God, that we're able, mighty God, to be able to detect the difference between the spirit of the Holy of God, the Holy Ghost, mighty God, than the spirit of Baal. I pray, Father God, that we'll be able to identify the difference and know the difference because we only have two religions in this earth. Mighty God, the religion, mighty God, that come from Baal, and the religion, mighty God, that came, mighty God, through our forefathers, Abraham. I pray, Father God, we'll know the difference, Father God. There's so many denominations around, mighty God, that we can become confused. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that we study the word of God so that we can know, mighty God, and we can know the difference. Because whatever, mighty God, you're doing, we know the plans of the devil is to infiltrate, mighty God, what you're doing, and to, mighty God, to imitate. The only thing the devil has, mighty God, and the only thing he can do, mighty God, everything that you're doing, Lord, he tried to infiltrate it, and he also tried to imitate it. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, mighty God, that we are people of God, we'll be able to discern through the word of God the difference, so that we can live an impactful life, and the joy of the Lord will be our strength. Father God, for those who are watching online, mighty God, I pray your blessings in their lives and over their lives. I pray, God, that you'll touch them, mighty God, mightily, Father God, even today. I pray the word of God will illuminate in their hearts, mighty God. And those who don't know you, mighty God, as Savior, will come to know you. Will come to understand, mighty God, that you, they're in this earth for a purpose. And the purpose must be fulfilled. Father God, you said in your word, many are the thoughts in a man's heart. Mighty God, but your perfect will concerning every one of us, mighty God, will prevail. So we thank you for everything. We thank you for all those who have shared, mighty God, the word of God with us and break bread with us. I pray, Father God, that you come to bless them. Allow them to come to study the word of God. Mighty God, and you, God, will be able to use them continually in the kingdom of God. I pray, God, for the worship team again. Continually bless them as they improve, mighty God, in bringing your praise and your glory. Mighty God, and to bring your presence in this house according to your worship. Because you said they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth so i pray your blessings over us as we'll go from here god if there's any sick among us i pray god that you will heal your people you said if there's any sick among us call for the elders of the church and the prior faith should heal the sick we're believing mighty god for anyone that's suffering any pain anything today god any kind of depression any mighty god anxiety anything that you're going through those who are watching online whatever they're going through god we know that we serve a god that heals and a god that delivered i pray father god you deliver your people cause healing to come 
to flow even now, Lord. And we thank you, God, for all the healing that you have accomplished today. Not through us, mighty God, not through me, but through the Holy Spirit, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Because, Lord, you said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So at the name of Jesus, we believe for healing, Father God. You said, whatever we ask in your name, it shall be done. And we believe in God that everything that we ask of you today concerning our lives, mighty God, healing, deliverance, everything, God, will come through your name today. We honor you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for this healing, and we thank you in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all for coming. Praise God.